Hello, I'm Lori Delagramaticus, the director of the National Adult Protective Services Association, NAPSA, as we go by. NAPSA is the association of all the state APS programs across the country, and we provide technical assistance and advocacy for those programs, as well as helping to improve practice across the country. Welcome. This webinar is part of a training series called Talk About Sexual Violence. The three-year project is designed to help medical providers and their patients with disabilities have meaningful conversations about sexual violence and encourage shared decision-making when looking for the right healing services. People with intellectual and or developmental disabilities are sexually assaulted seven times more often than those without disabilities. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer individuals with intellectual or other disabilities also face high rates of sexual violence. Because of this, it's imperative that medical providers talk about sexual assault with their patients and offer support. Unfortunately, Many medical professionals do not have the tools to fa facilitate these critical conversations. Talk about sexual violence centers on learning from conversation groups with medical providers and people with disabilities, including survivors of sexual assault. The purpose of the conversation groups is to find out how medical appointments can be more supportive and patient-centered and what are the existing challenges, especially if a patient with an intellectual or developmental disability has experienced sexual assault? The conversation groups were designed as an online video session with medical professionals who answered questions about their medical practices with patients who had been sexually assaulted, including those with disabilities. Multiple sessions were also conducted to gather input from people with intellectual and developmental disabilities about their experiences during appointments with medical providers. Responses from the conversation groups can be found at the Talk About Sexual Violence website, along with a webinar hosted by Keisha Weller, a National Sexual Assault Peer Advisor. Participants who attend the medical providers conversation groups shared experience from their professional practices and suggestions for more effective patient approaches. Participants included sexual assault experts, representatives from abuse forensic centers, hospitals, and elder abuse specialists. Conversation group questions were concentrated in three core areas, the medical practice, health management organization policies, and recommendations for enhanced resources. The first set of questions ask about each participant's medical practice. The questions range from experience with sexual assault to patient-centered approaches. Some highlights included caregivers accompanying patients can be helpful by clarifying, taking notes, providing emotional support, or a hindrance, speaking for the patient or preventing the patients from providing full disclosure. Providers are hesitant to discuss sexual assault because of privacy concerns and cultural differences. Furthermore, providers find it difficult to identify signs of abuse and bring them up in plain language. Medical professionals are often pressured to limit time with patients due to the number of patients scheduled. Sexual abuse awareness and disability training were inconsistent across participants. The participants believed all providers should be patient-centered and this teaching should begin in medical school. These findings are telling us that there is little consistency in service provision. This has been shared too many times before by survivors and their families who've had varied experiences that too often were not helpful. The type of response the survivor gets from a medical provider regarding a sexual assault often depends on that medical provider and whether they feel comfortable enough with the topic or have had training about it. No standard of care or best promising practices were known to the providers convened. 
The second set of questions focused on health management organizations, also referred to as HMOs, and sexual violence. Some highlights included when the participants were asked about protocols for speaking with patients about safety and privacy, many reported barriers to this, such as a lack of rapport with patients, not knowing how to communicate with nonverbal patients, patient discomfort when talking about this issue, and needing the caregiver to help them with understanding the conversation. When asked about mandated reporting, there was little response. One person reported they have had guidelines about mandated reporting requirements. Another reported there was an internal website with instructions about reporting. Finally, there was very little training provided about the significant impact of trauma on people with disabilities or the value of using trauma-informed practices when working with this population. These findings tell us that among these medical providers, there is little education, knowledge, and comfort on, with the topic of sexual violence and persons with disabilities. Medical providers did not know how to address the topic effectively with people with disabilities and have had little or no training in this area. With regard to patients who were nonverbal, they were typically referred to social workers for further interventions. However, providers were unsure if the social workers had any experience working with nonverbal people who had experienced sexual assault or have disabilities. The third focus area for the conversations groups was on resource provision. Some highlights included the following. First, in order to increase capacity in this area, medical providers stated they needed to have additional reimbursement for required care and time. Patient-centered care is a way to save on future costs and adherence to consistent protocols and additional training. Ideas for outreach and training included continuing medical education or CME training, better screening of medical records, data platforms with readily available instructions and increased use of multidisciplinary teams. These findings represented two overarching issues. First, in order for medical providers to address the barriers to consistent best practice care for survivors with disability, there has to be a better system that supports the importance of it. Second, utilizing basic tools available online would offer easy access for care recommendations, alleviating other time costly avenues. Participants were generous with their experience and suggestions, which highlighted the need for training on the impact of trauma on persons with disabilities. Recommendations included broader screening and attention to indicators of sexual violence in patients who have multiple diagnoses. As significant, addressing financial disincentives from healthcare systems have an impact on patient examinations, care, and follow-up. The ability to have open communications with patients with disabilities and providers about sexual violence depends on established rapport and trust, including using accessible everyday language. The goal of the Talk About Sexual Violence Project is to help medical providers and their patients communicate more easily about sexual violence. Those of us who work in adult protective services encourage everyone to partner to make this system work better. Please reach out to us if you have concerns about mandated reporting, if you would like to help be connected up to service providers in through multidisciplinary teams and so on. We stand ready to partner with you to make this whole system work better. While progress has been made, there is still much work to do. I know we can do more. For more information about the Talk About Sexual Violence Project, please visit the website at talkaboutsexualviolence.org. The project was coordinated by the ARCS National Center on Criminal Justice and Disabilities and the Board Resource Center and funded by the WITH Foundation. Thank you.